Hello everyone and welcome to this short introduction to EGSub, the subtitling program we are going to use to do our subtitling in class. First, we go to Google, we search for EGSub, written like that. After that, when we find the correct entry, we click on it and when it loads, takes a while, we find this main page and in the download section you see that there is one of the versions of the program for each platform. You have Windows, full installation, Windows portable installation, which you can get anywhere with your pen drive, and after that, one for Mac. As I'm using a Mac now, I download the correct version. Full installation then, and it will take, well, not much, approximately, let's see, one minute, one minute or two to download. While we wait, we explore the same page, and if we scroll down, we see that these are screenshots taken directly from the program, and we observe that there is a right-hand section with a mixture of code and text. The phrase is, the body's pressure, followed by the head, and then we have code that we'll learn about later. That code is transferred to the screen section of the same program, and there is a translation for the Japanese kanji as well as, of course, the horizontal bar downwards, with today we'll be studying how to manipulate people through information control. Other screenshots that we may observe are the ones for Windows and Mac. You see that this one is for Windows, and it will look exactly the same as the one for Mac. We have the code, the screen, and the text. If we go to the second tab, more or less the same thing, with a different distribution. You see that the program is very easy to adapt. And one very important thing is the spectrum, the sound that we may observe and even do some karaoke with it. You have the syllable by syllable division in this last mode of observation. These ones, exactly the same as before, are the versions for Mac, so installation shouldn't prove too difficult for those of you using Windows. The main page also contains the horizontal tabs in the upper section. If we go to the manual, you see that there are several different versions. 3.2 is the latest. If you click on it, you will see that there is a very detailed guide on how to use the program. For example, the common tasks that appear in the very first installment are timing a translated script, basic typesetting, putting the finished subtitles onto the video, as we'll see here, translating, correcting, and again, more advanced versions, such as timing karaoke or creating fancy karaoke effects. This is a description of the program itself. You will see that it was originally created as a tool to typeset, but later it was produced more professionally by all of these people that you see here and should take credit for it. Programming, installation, also the manual, the hosting where the program is, well, accessible to everyone else, localization files, that is to say translation, additional things, and many other licenses and credits. So you will see that doing something and doing it well is not so easy as it looks. We open the file, and in the case of Mac, I simply drag the symbol into the application's folder. It copies there, and we will immediately be able to open it. Then I cancel this part and the applications folder is already accessible to me through EGISUB. The logo may change, but it will basically be like that. I open and here we are. This is EGISUB, the subtitling program. If we open a video, the one that I have prepared is a fragment from a video game called Ace Attorney first fragment, it's in mp4 format. EGSub reads many different formats. We have the video screen, the audio spectrum, where we have to locate where it starts and finishes, the section where we write the subtitle itself, as we would in a normal text in a Word document with certain specifications, and once we have a line ready and press enter, it immediately goes to the next section, and we can follow the spectrum from there automatically it's five seconds, but you can change that setting, of course. You can delete the line by simply right-clicking on the line that you have just edited. 
So we're now interested in locating where the sound starts. For that, we move these scrolling bars and press spacebar to activate it. The moment we have decided, we simply click the spacebar. As you see in this section, there is only sound but no voice. We extend the cursor to 10 seconds approximately. We listen again. We move forwards and we see that right there, there is a phrase. Then we move the scrolls, first the left one to the beginning, there it is, and then the right one to the end. That's it. We play again by pressing spacebar. And we write the phrase. We press enter and the line is edited. We now have to select the next step. We right click on it, move it until the end. There's the second phrase but we have to adjust it. This will happen every time we move forward. Once it is adjusted, we'll write it down. Ready to go? Question mark. Next line. We adjust it. Again, we have to follow the spectrum. We adjust this part again. And if necessary, for as many times as we need. We write the line. You bet. Let's do this. Exclamation point. And 16 characters completes the line. Those are the characters per second so that it isn't too fast for the viewer to read. Next line again. No sound there. We know where it starts. And now we know where it finishes. Right, then we have the fourth line of our subtitle. This one is a bit longer, so we write it down. She's been with us for half a year. Though, that's a subordinate phrase, I can hardly believe it. Believe it. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we see 51 characters. The line is too long. We would have to cover the screen from left to right. That's too much for the viewer. So we introduce a separation to edit two different lines. We press Shift and Enter. Or alternatively, backward slash followed by capital N. Remember, dividing it into two lines shift and enter and now we have 26 characters the four lines are ready and we can move the cursor downwards now we want to export it export as export and very important we have to name it in the same way as the video so that it plays at the same time so I write the same title aa srt write dot srt because that's the universal format for subtitles. We save it and now we close the program. As we already have a version saved, we click on No. We don't want to save it again. Now we have the video edited AA1, AA1, MP4 and SRT. We play the video and the subtitles should be there. We open it with VLC, a free program that you can access. <laughs> But we notice that this last phrase is produced by a narrator, not one of the characters on screen, so ideally it should be in italics rather than normal type. Now, we can't see the video. Then we go to the video tab, vertical tab up there, open video, and there it is. We have it again in our program. We go directly to the line that we want to change, 
select all the text and click on italics. It's more or less the same symbol that you can find in Microsoft Word or in any word processor. We can now see that the title of the file aa1.srt has an asterisk next to it. That means it hasn't yet been saved. You click on the save button, the one that looks like a diskette, and the job's done. We close the program again and the modified file should apply the changes the moment we open the video player. And there it is, we have our finished work, the .srt file, and if you have any questions, please ask through the comments section of this YouTube video. Also, remember to follow the channel for the latest updates. Goodbye!